Hello guys! So today I wanted to show you the bag that I got um, about a week ago and this is a bag that I've been looking for a long time in the pre-love market. It was released in spring summer collection in uh, 2018 so that is uh, three years ago and at the time it used to be very popular but you know um, trends die down and now it's not a very popular bag anymore like I don't see it much in social media which is something that I personally uh, love and I always wanted this bag I tried many times uh, but uh, I wanted to wait for uh, you know the color combination that really spoke to me and also I wanted to buy it in the pre-love market so I've been looking and stalking Bessier Collective for a long time actually many years until I found the color combination and the price uh, that I thought I was willing to pay for this bag. I got this at a bargain and I will explain you all the details about it. But first of all, I would like you to, you know, to, to show you a little bit about this bag. Um, again, this is a Loewe uh, gate bag in the size small. You have uh, currently a mini size, which is super cute. It's the perfect bag for summer, you know, when you're wearing a flowy dress and um, you want to carry a small, cute crossbody bag. But it's also very, very tiny, so you cannot fit too many things in the bag. So I knew that for my daily life, I would need a small size just to be able to carry a little bit more. And this bag is crafted in soft natural calfskin. So this is the soft uh, natural calfskin in the color tan. And this version comes with extra large saddle stitching. This is what they call saddle stitching. And this is just like a knotted uh, leather decoration, but it also holds the the front flap so when you open the back you just pull up um, the flap and when you want to secure it this kind of uh, leather knot is the one that holds uh, the front flap secured so nothing will uh, will fall from the from the back you could also wear it and I find this is a very minimalistic way uh, so you could wear it like this if you want it. You can see the Loewe anagram embossed on the leather. And I can see in the video uh, it shows uh, like a shiny, beautiful leather. Actually, the leather is very, very soft, but it's a little bit more matte. It has less patina than what you can see in the video. So you can, the video shows the leather a little bit more shiny than what it really is actually it is more matte like in this side of the of the video of the screen more than a shiny leather when you touch it and this is something that i particularly love from loewe uh, i think loewe is uh, a brand that um of course the main focus of this brand is craftsmanship and they are very good at leather craftsmanship because that is their heritage. It, it is one of the oldest uh, luxury fashion houses in the world. And I'm talking uh, the same heritage as uh, Delvaux, Hermes, Moina. So uh, Loewe maybe is in the fourth or fifth ranking uh, regarding legacy. So it's a brand that it was very much born uh by uh, leather craftsmen and that is what they do the best so all all their leathers all their products they are very well executed the stitching is always perfection but i find loewe leather is just how can i say it's just like a when you touch it is a very much a feeling that the back gives you so it's not about the looks, but when you touch the leather, it's just so pleasant. And it's, a very, it's very difficult to, to describe with words. Uh, you touch it and you just see the quality of the leather, but also it's, 
it's such a nice like a caress you know it's a very nice touch a nice feeling of the product the it comes with a crossbody detachable strap so actually you just secure it and you can adjust it with this with these pins you could also absolutely uh, take it out and it would be like a nice clutch let me show you the interior is this gold suede interior actually the suede is a uh, heritage leather by loewe they started producing this kind of gold suede in the 70s uh, and it's absolutely beautiful this suede is uh, certainly more um how can i say more pleasant than the celine suede which they also have suede in their linings usually but the loewe suede is just absolutely like it feels like butter when you touch it is very very pleasant so don't be afraid of the suede lining it's a heritage leather and um it was uh started being used in the 70s so they know what they're doing with their interior so you can see i've been using this bag uh daily to go to work and let me show you a little bit it's divided into compartments and this is what i carry i tell you i'm a lazy person so i always carry my pouch and you can see in all my videos uh the kind of essentials that i will carry in this uh, makeup pouch uh, nothing special uh, I guess everybody has different essentials but to me I just put everything here and then I just change from back to back and you can see you have like a slip pocket it comes with the authenticity card I bought this bag pre-loved but it came with all the cards except the dust bag which is something that you know it doesn't bother me but it came with authenticity card you see Loewe made in spain embossed so this is a nice pocket then let me take out you have a back pocket and a front pocket and what i do is um i put this is my hermes uh, car holder so i just put it here and then i put my tissues there and uh, i just leave the authenticity cards inside and then i just put my pouch and it fits perfectly if you wanted to carry like sunglasses or anything else um you could still have enough space probably if i didn't want to carry my pouch i could even fit more things inside um and when you close it you still have like a lot of room in the back when you close it you still you know it's like it's not a tight fit because you have a lot of room here so you can put as many things as you want you need to be careful because on the sides you see you have a big uh, gap uh, so you do need to be careful but it's such a beautiful nice blue color it goes very well with jeans um and i find it is a casual bag but also it's very refined and uh unisex you know i like bags that could be either carried by a man or a woman and i find actually most of uh, jonathan anderson the the loewe creative director most of his styles uh, are very much um, unisex and that's something that I really appreciate uh, the name of the back gate comes from this uh, metal pin if you can see it looks like a hinge of the door of a gate and this is just for decoration so please do not attempt to take it out because this is stuck in the leather and it has this nice like a little bit casual and fun leather strap you could put here your charms or whatever you want but this is just for decoration so you can see this is the metal pin and it looks like the hinge of a door and that's why the bag is called gate bag so very cute i mean it's, it's very different to any other bags that you can see in the market unfortunately loewe bags uh, do not keep the value 
and they are not very sought, sought after in the pre-love market. So I got this bar. Currently it retails um, 1,750 euro. That's where I checked the price uh, because it's a Spanish brand. So if you go to Spain, that's the price you would pay for this size. And I got this back in Vestia Collective for 580 euro. I think that's crazy. And uh, when I bought it, uh, actually, um, I was hoping that there was something bad or something wrong with this bag, like maybe a smell or maybe some, some scratches or some issues. And when I got the bag, I could not believe it. Like I said it to my sister, like I bought this bag thinking that, okay, you know, um, it's very cheap. Something is wrong with the bag. Certainly I cannot find anything in the photos. Uh, but I just think it's it's nice. It goes with my color palette because you know guys I'm very Casual and very neutral kind of person. I love tan and blue. They are my favorite colors So I decided to go for it and you know, it was a kind of okay Let's see what I get and when I got this bag. Oh my god, like I could see like I could not find any like i was looking for stitches of any issue you know with the back i could not find anything it's brand new even the suede in the interior uh, i could not find any you know any marks or any problems with it so i was very very surprised and uh that's a pity as well because you know loeb is such a good quality and i don't know why people are not you know so much interested in their bags so um yeah that's a little bit of a pity and um i've been looking for this bag for many years also because you know it is a very unusual um uh, it's like a half moon shape uh saddle bag so saddle bag is a very traditional back style i don't think it's ever gonna be out of you know of trend so i think it's a very classic back style and th this was a very fun kind of different uh take on the traditional saddle back so that's why i love it so much i know that loewe is very much good quality leather so i was not worried about uh the leather quality uh but i just wanted to wait because at the, at some point it was a very trendy back same as the uh, loewe puzzle and i usually because i don't want to buy on impulse i always try to pace myself and think okay do i really need this bag like do i really love it or it's just that i'm seeing everywhere in social media so usually what i do is i will wait for months or years you know to see if i really like that bag and if i still love it then i keep looking for it and with a lot of patience I go to the pre-love markets and I try to find myself a bargain. And with this case, I was very lucky that I could find one. And uh, it's absolutely uh, worth it. You can see the back stands on its own. So even though it is a round shape, let me show you. It is smushy, but also structured. So it can hold up by itself. It doesn't come forward and in the back you can see let me show you it has a very nice pocket which was a very <laughs> nice surprise because obviously i didn't research this bag very well i thought this was only like for decoration but it's not it's a very nice uh, pocket so you can put here your phone uh it fits a phone it fits a metro card i mean uh, tissues whatever you want to to fit so it's a stylish bag but it's also very practical and very functional another thing is you know you can see in many uh, influencers you could carry your bag like this so you could hold it like a clutch which is also pretty cool and what else can i say about this bag basically um it's not it's not a heavy bag actually it is 
very comfortable i've been carrying it to work daily ever since i got it so i received this bag and i changed from my moina um gabrielle reporter which i love i changed to this bag and it's the kind of bag that you know i put it when i'm back from work i put it on the top of my my table in the living room and i look at it when i pass by and you know i i, I keep i keep thinking to myself this bag is so pretty like the color is so nice the leather is so good you know it's one of those bags that you admire from the distance and you say oh i love this bag and it only happens to me with two bags one is the gabrielle uh the moina gabrielle pm in wood rose and this bag and when i have them i just put them on the table and i just find myself thinking oh i really love this bag it's so beautiful it's so pretty so yeah this one is very practical if you're someone who you know wants to carry a little bit to work uh and you want a luxury uh high quality leather bag for crossbody for shoulder or even for clutch you could uh, have a look at this uh, Loewe gate I think the small size is good for most of the people and I wanted to talk about something very important to me because you know I love handbags so I'm always browsing for YouTube videos in the handbag luxury handbag community and is about I want to talk about this the made in Spain stamp I am Spanish I am born in Bar I was born in Barcelona, but I've been living in China for soon. I'm on the way for seven years now. I wanted to talk a little bit about this made in Spain. And the reason is because I find in many videos and this especially from people from the US and people from Asia sometimes, uh, they are talking about uh, whether it is it is the same value to buy a bag made in Spain than a bag made in France. So I just wanted to give you my thoughts about this made in Spain, made in Italy, made in France uh, perspective. What are my thoughts? I know my opinion is biased because I'm Spanish. So of course, you know, um, I have my own opinion about my country. But uh, I think that uh, Spain is one of the countries that is very, very good about craftsmanship. And in the whole country, depending on the province. So basically, Spain is divided in what we call autonomous communities. Each community is very good at a different uh, craft and also they have their own traditions. But overall, I find my country is very good at legacy, you know, heritage, uh, keeping traditions for food. Like for example, in the north of Spain, you have one of the most taste, tastiest wines in the world, and this is in La Rioja. So I'm sure if you're a wine lover, you have heard of La Rioja wines. But also in Catalonia, where this is my autonomous community, uh, we have Cava, which is the Spanish version of Champagne. And uh, in the in Valencia, in this uh, other is another uh, autonomous community. They are very good at everything related with rice. Like this is where paella, uh, such a famous rice. Uh, dish in Spain uh, is originally from so it's from this region they're very good at uh, cooking rice cooking uh, noodles but also they're very good at food that takes a lot of tradition for example uh, we have this um, how, how we call it in English it's like hot chocolate but it's a very thick hot chocolate and we have churros which is like this um, this pastry that we fry with uh, oil and we eat with a with a thick hot chocolate. Uh, so this comes from this region, 
And you know, Spanish people are very picky with their food, and they really, they really love to go and travel to these kind of places where、uh, they have they keep this tradition, and you know, and they will try what where is the best hot chocolate in in that community, you know, because they're very picky with their food. We are very, you know, we are foodies.、Uh, so. What I want to say is that in Spain, every autonomous、uh, community, it's well known for、uh, a certain specific craftsmanship, and in the south specifically,、uh, there is a town in the province of Cadiz, is、uh, maybe seventeen thousand inhabitants, so it's not very big, and it's a beautiful, you know, white town with these white houses, that are very typical from the south. And it's called Ubrique. Ubrique has more than over two hundred years of leather craftsmanship. It is、uh, mainly dedicated to handbags, but also to small leather goods and belts. And、um, it's a town that you know it's very difficult to find someone in the town that it's not related to leather craftsmanship. Uh, so it has a long heritage of leather craftsmanship, and in Spanish we call it marroquineria. So、um, you know, can you imagine two hundred years? And it's a small town, so you cannot imagine this as a big, huge factory with people working, but very small,、uh, like ateliers, family-owned companies. Who are dedicated, and they learn generation by generation、uh, how to work the leather. It's also a place very well known for having very good weather conditions. And you know, for leather, it is very important the environment where the animal is living, but also the food. And also, it is very important、uh, how the animal,、uh, you know, finally was killed. You know, it, everything has an effect on its leather. So、um, what I want to say is that don't think of it like a massive, huge factory with people working, but more like、uh, a place where most of its people,、uh, most of the families,、uh, learn this craft, and they have been passing the legacy and the know-how of leather craft、uh, to their、uh, to their own、um, younger generations. So the problem. That Ubrique has is that they work with luxury fashion houses,、uh, but they, of course, they have confidential agreements and they cannot disclose who they're working for. They cannot、uh, show any proof that they're working with each designer, and you know they cannot share this kind of information. And、uh, you know many brands are very scared of、uh, the dupes and. Uh, the fakes, so、uh, they don't like to disclose where they're manufacturing their handbags. So we know that uh, mostly uh, luxury handbags. Most of、uh, this town called Ubrique in Cadiz, which is the south of Spain, is where they produce most of the exclusive handbags. And we know that they work for Dior, they work for Chanel, Louis Vuitton. Gucci, Prada, Tots, you know,、uh, even Cartier. So this is what、uh, it is known, but they cannot. They don't have the right to、uh, show in their products made in Ubrique, and this made me think how unfair it is because eventually,、um, you know, the final consumer is buying a French house、uh, bag. Uh, without realizing that the heritage, the the hands that produce this item, they come from a very small family, a small company, fa- a family company, in the south of Spain, and that's when even the consumer, when they go to the shop, they say, oh, if I'm buying a French brand. Um, and it it says made in Spain. Well, somehow it must be a lower quality, when in fact, you know, France, Italy, and Spain are very well known for 
its craftsmanship and um, you know the leather quality and working with uh, leather um, it is very typical in Spain like I remember my neighbors uh, in Barcelona they had a leather um, store and they were producing their own designs and you know uh, my mom would go there and buy a leather jacket for for the winter so that's very common in Spain it's part of our tradition you know it's the same as um, you know olive oil like I grew up uh, with abundance of olive oil uh, in my house and uh, now in China I pay like 14 euro for one liter of olive oil when in Spain like you can get very good quality for two euro three euro maximum you know olive oil is everywhere but it's part of our culture it's part of who we are as a Spanish people now I tell you the problem we have in Spain and it is that we are not as good as Italian people in marketing and design uh, we are very much focused on our tradition. We are a little bit more conservative in style, I would say. And you also have to th consider one, th one very important thing affecting Spain. Uh, the first government, th the first democratic government we had is in 1982. I was born in 1983, which means I am 38 years old. So one year before I was born, we had our first prime minister. Before that, we had many years of transition into democracy. We had around 39 years of a dictatorship. So during 39 years, Spain was closed to any international influence. And before that, before that dictatorship, we had uh, three years of Spanish civil, civil war. So the people were in war during three years. After the civil war, they had a dictatorship. So no democracy, very difficult times, total uh, closeness uh, towards any international contact or influence. And then we had several years uh, from um, 75 to 82, that was what we call the transition into democracy. So our democracy is very recent, you know, 40 years is nothing. So can you imagine that this meant that Spain is very close to the exterior, they are not as good as trading as in other countries. Um, so most of the, the mindset of the Spanish people Especially, you know, I tell you I'm 38 years old. I have many people my age that they would say, Silvia, why do you want to go to China if we have so many beautiful places in Spain? And they would be right because it's true that Spain has beautiful places. It's a very nice country to live. But the mindset was we are okay here. You know, we still have many things to discover. So they are very much a laid back uh, kind of culture. Uh, of course, the new generation now with internet and, you know, all this international globalization influence, they are very much more interested in learning languages, in traveling, you know. But if you look back, our culture is very much about our tradition, doing our own thing. Um, and we are not very good at uh, propaganda about our country. Most of what people know about Spain is flamenco, paella, and um, yeah, not very much, or maybe football. Uh, that's, that's the main things they know. Uh, but they don't know about our leather craftsmanship and the history behind it. They don't know that in a small town in Spain, you know, they've been working for over 200 uh, years, the leather. Of course, in this town that I was explaining to you before, you know, they suffered a lot when the fashion houses decided to start producing in Southeast Asia. They lost a lot of orders and some people had to, you know, start other, other business and trying to survive. But within one year, those fashion houses were back because guess what? Quality is quality. And when you're buying, um, uh, luxury leather goods, you want the best of the best and in the end it's all about you know the the finishing the stitching the quality of the leather and how it is executed you know so with all this all i want to say is don't be afraid to buy a made in spain 
uh, leather item. It actually has a lot of, um, you know, it has a very good reputation in Spain, of course. Uh, it's a very good product. Loewe is a symbol of a Spanish leather craftsmanship. Uh, it's a very popular and well-known brand for many years. And its origin is mainly leather, but now they're focusing. And this is something I really like about Jonathan Anderson. He focuses many, very much into this vision of craftsmanship and keeping the know-how and the heritage. And not only about leather, but also about ceramics, you know, and uh, the, the, the woven uh, products. So I think Loewe is a very special house doing things with leather that you cannot find in any other house. Like for example, they have their Loewe animals uh, series uh, that I find super fun. Like you can buy like a pouch or a leather handbag with an elephant shape or a panda shape. I just think it's very fun. I love also their charms. Uh, I highly recommend their charms are made of leather and all their small leather goods like the wallets, the belts, uh, if you buy a Loewe product, it's going to be a very high quality um, leather product. So that's what I wanted to share. Uh, don't be afraid of the, the made in, stamp, uh, in Spain um, stamp. It's okay. Uh, you're not getting a lower quality product. I totally understand if you want to buy a Chanel bag and you want it a made in France instead of made in Italy or made in Spain. But from a quality perspective, I can totally assure you that uh, the production uh, in Spain is absolutely one of a uh, long tradition and heritage. So you will be fine. You will not be getting a worse product. And you know, every country treats the leather. The hands are different. The culture is different. So how about we embrace the different cultures instead of just saying, um, I want a made in France and French is, you know, we, we have such a high reputation for French products and uh, with this regard, like made in Spain or made in Italy, I don't think this is fair, especially because, you know, of the tradition I was explaining to you, um, you know, in Spain, also you have a very strong footwear industry. This you will find especially in Alicante. Uh, and you have like uh, brands like Stuart Weizmann, uh, they produce in Elda, which is a bigger town than Ubrique, and they specialize in footwear, especially for women. And yeah, so I can tell you in each community, they're very strong at their own craftsmanship. Leather craftsmanship is very important for Spain. So there's a lot of tradition that we have to keep as part of our history, part of our heritage. And the reason why it's not so popular around the world is because, as I told you, you know, during 40 years, we were very close to the international influence and trading. Uh, so for us, uh, maybe we don't have those skills to let, let our skills and the, the best of our country to be known for the rest of the world. So unless you have um, you know, relatives in Spain or friends or you visit Spain, it's, it, sometimes it's very difficult to know all these kind of details, you know. So if you go to Mallorca, for example, and you go to the beach, I can tell you Mallorca is very good also for, for foodwear, leather foodwear. So also happens in Menorca, the, the Balearic Islands, right? So just, um, I highly, highly suggest you to if you go to Spain for tourism, I know now is not probably not the right time. But if you go, it's just try to find the places where the artisans are, learn from them. And I can tell you it's a very culturally rich country with a lot of traditions. And um, yeah, I think most of the leather products are very high quality. So don't be afraid of the made in Spain label. So anyway, that's my rant. Um, I hope you like this video. I'm loving this bag, as I told you, very happy with it. Um, it comes in different colors. So that's also a plus because you don't get to wear what most people will wear. Um, 
they have like this is the extra large um, saddle stitching but you can also find it without it you can find it this is grained uh, calfskin you can see but it also comes in smooth calfskin as well you can find it in different color combinations also in the bag uh, but it also comes in uh, monochrome which is a very nice look as well uh, and you can carry this I mean depending on the color combination I think you can carry it um, you know both men and women I think it looks awesome it's very light it's very comfortable and yeah i highly recommend it so thank you so much a uh, big hug to francisca i know she's the one watching my videos so a big hug to her i hope she's well in munich and to everyone watching uh thank you please subscribe if you didn't uh do it yet and keep in touch in the comments so have a good day bye bye